Hey guys, today in this video we're going to walk you through the initial setup of your Mitris LX7 using the GHL Connect app. In this video, we'll show you how to download the GHL Connect app, connect to your LX7 for the first time with the app, configure general settings, configure the LX7's hotspot, customize your GHL dashboard, create your own light schedule, and lastly, we'll show you how to get the highest performance out of your light. To get started, you'll first need to download the GHL Connect app onto your smartphone or tablet. You can find the app in the Google Play Store or Apple Store by doing a search for GHL Connect. Next, power on the LX7 and wait for the device to fully boot up. After about 15 to 30 seconds, open up the Wi-Fi settings page on your smartphone or tablet and search for nearby Wi-Fi networks. You will see GHL DEV listed as one of the networks you can connect to. If you don't see this network, restart the light and try again. Select the GHL DEV network and enter the password Starfish, then wait for your device to connect. Once that's done, open up the GHL Connect app. The screen you see here is the My Devices page. Here is where you can see any GHL device you can connect to. At the moment, this page is empty because we must first create a dedicated connection so that we can connect to the LX7. Add a connection by selecting Add Device. Select the LX7, then give this connection a name. We're naming this connection LX7 Hotspot because this will be the dedicated hotspot connection for when we connect directly to the LX7's network. In the host slash IP field, leave it as is. Since you're connected to your LX7's hotspot, what you see here is correct. These numbers are your LX7's hotspot IP address. Press the add button, then select the newly made connection to connect. Once you see the dashboard, you are officially connected to the Metris. So now let's set up the general settings. Press the menu icon at the top left and select General. Select the language, then set the time and date. In the Wireless and Operation Mode section, select if this light should be a standalone, master, or slave device. If you have only one Metris LX7 in your setup, Select Standalone. If you are running more than one LX7 over your tank, choose either Master or Slave. Select Master if you want this light controlling other LX7s. Select Slave if you want this light controlled by a Master LX7 or Proflux controller. The Address field is where you assign the actual numbering of the fixture. Your first fixture should be given address number 1. The second fixture should be given address 2. Third fixture should be address 3. So on and so forth. The channel field can be left as is. By default, all Mitris LX7 fixtures are set to communicate on channel 11. If you are running more than one LX7 over the same tank, make sure all those fixtures are set to the same channel. The display illumination section is where you can set the brightness of the side display. If you wish to use this feature, set the bright and dark settings and specify when dark time should start and end. If you wish to set up a pin code, you can do that here. Once you're done entering all the information, press save. Now that the general settings are configured, let's move on to the hotspot setup phase. Press the menu icon and select network. Select access point then select On. In the SSID field, type in any name you wish to give to your LX7 hotspot network. This will be the new name of your hotspot signal. Whenever you search for nearby Wi-Fi networks, you will no longer see the default GHL DEV network listed. Instead, you'll see the name you entered here. Next, type in the password you wish to give to this hotspot network. Once that's done, press Apply, press Save, then confirm by pressing Yes. The LX7 Wi-Fi module will now restart itself so that it can display the new name of the hotspot network. 
Use your smartphone or tablet to search again for nearby networks. You will now see the new name of your LX7 hotspot network. Select it, enter the password you assigned, then wait to connect. Your LX7's hotspot network is now set up. The next step will be to customize the information you see on your dashboard. To do that, reconnect to your LX7 using the dedicated hotspot connection you made earlier. From here, press the brush icon to enter edit mode. By pressing and holding down the four-way arrow, you can freely rearrange your information tiles. Pressing the red trash icon will delete that specific tile. Pressing the grid icon will allow you to edit the size of that tile. If you'd like to add new tiles, press the plus icon and select the tiles you wish to add. Once you're satisfied with your dashboard, press the check icon to save and exit editing mode. Now that the dashboard is set up, the next step will be to create your own light schedule. We'll show you how to do that by using the multi-channel setup feature. Press the menu icon, select illumination, then select multi-channel setup. In the set dimming point section, You'll notice there is already a light schedule running on your LX7. This is the default schedule. You can either edit this existing schedule or start from the beginning. For the purpose of this video, we're going to delete these time points so that we can create a new light schedule from scratch. To delete a time point, press the blue gear icon to the right of the desired time point. Press delete, then press yes to confirm. Repeat those steps until all the time points have been removed. Now that all points have been removed, press the Add button to create a new time point. Since this is the first time point, we must specify at which time the LX7 should turn on for the day. Choose the time you want the LX7 to turn on, press Done, then press Add. Press the Add button again and specify the time at which these settings should run. Use the nine sliders below to adjust each LED channel to your liking. Once that's done, press Add. Repeat these steps until you have created a complete light schedule suitable for your plants and coral. If you need to make any adjustments to your schedule, you can always come back to this multi-channel setup page and edit or delete any time point. Once you're satisfied with your light schedule, press save and the schedule will be sent to your LX7. For the final part of this video, we're going to show you how to configure your energy options so that you can get the highest performance out of your light. Press the menu icon, press the back arrow, and select energy options. Here is where you can adjust the performance settings of your LX7. If this is your only LX7 fixture, leave these settings as is. If you have multiple LX7 fixtures and you're connected to the master LX7, select the second option. Doing so will automatically transfer the settings from this page to your slave LX7s. In the predefined energy plan section, choose one of the three energy options. If you're looking to get the most power out of your LEDs, select Max Performance. If you want the fixture to be balanced between high output and high efficiency, select Balance. If you prefer to get the highest efficiency, select Very Efficient and Quiet. Once you've selected an option, scroll to the bottom of the page and take a look at the Power Balancing Technology section. Select Open Power Balancing Settings. This feature allows you to access unused power from your LED channels. This unused power can be transferred over to individual illumination channels that need an extra bit of light output. In essence, this feature allows you to utilize the full power of your LX7 without sacrificing color spectrum or overdriving the LEDs. For example, if your light schedule is running royal blues at 100% and you want to give this channel a bit of extra power, you can use the slider to send more power to this channel. This extra power is then pulled from other channels that are not running at 100%.
Once you've adjusted the PBT settings to your liking, press save and your LX7 initial setup is complete. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about this video or any GHL product, feel free to contact us on any one of our support channels. Until next time folks, take care.